We all know that objects falling from the same height will reach the ground at the same time, no matter how heavy they are. For instance, one could be a box filled with feathers, whereas the other contains a heavy weight. We also know that objects are pulled towards the ground under the force of gravity, and that the magnitude of this gravitational force is proportional to the mass of the object. Therefore, the force of gravity pulls harder on heavier objects. And this raises the following question. If indeed gravity pulls harder on heavier objects, why is it that still both objects accelerate towards the ground at the same rate and thereby reach the ground at the same time? And at the end of this video, you'll be able to explain why this is. And to do so, we will need to discuss a fact that is oftentimes underappreciated. Namely, that there are two types of mass, the inertial mass and the gravitational mass. Let's see how this exactly works. First, let me explain what I exactly mean with two types of mass. There are two fundamental formulas in nature that contain this property mass. On the one hand, we have Newton's second law, which says that F is equal to the mass of an object times its acceleration. This formula basically links the force that you need to apply on an object in order to give it a certain amount of acceleration. And the proportionality constant is this mass m. So this is a formula about motion and inertia. And that's why we call the mass in this formula the inertial mass. Or in other words, the inertial mass is the thing that makes it much harder to push, for example, a truck than it is to push a bike. On the other hand, we have the force of gravitation, of which we know that the magnitude can be written as a constant g times the multiplication of two masses divided by the square of the distance between them. And here on Earth, we can rewrite this formula as simply the mass of the object that is falling on Earth multiplied by the gravitational constant small g. Now, this is a formula that describes the fundamental force of gravity, or the way that objects with a certain mass attract each other. And that is why the mass in this formula is called the gravitational mass, or it's the thing or property that makes objects attract each other. In a sense, the gravitational mass is the charge of the force of gravity, in the same sense that electric charge is the charge of the electric force. Now, of course, you probably know that both of these masses are equal to each other, or they're basically the same property, but still it's important to stress their difference, because it's quite subtle. The inertial mass is the property of an object that tells you how hard it is to move it around, whereas the gravitational mass is the property of an object that tells you to what extent it is attracted to other objects. Now, the fact that these two properties or these two masses are equal to each other makes it so that objects here on Earth all fall at the same rate. And to show why this indeed is a consequence of what we just saw, let's dive into a concrete example. And in the first step of our example, we are going to calculate the force that is needed to move two distinct objects with a very different mass from standing still to a velocity of roughly 10 meters per second in one second. The first object has a mass of, let's say, 100 grams, so 0.1 kilograms, whereas the second mass has a mass of 100 kilograms, so 1000 times more. And as said before, these objects are standing still, but we want to apply a force such that after one second, they will have a velocity of roughly 10 meters per second. And this corresponds to giving them an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. And to calculate the force needed to accelerate an object by a specific acceleration, we of course use Newton's second law, that this force is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration that we want to accelerate it with. So for our first object, this becomes F, which is equal to the inertial mass, subscripted with an I, of this object, multiplied by the acceleration that we want to accelerate it to. Now we know that the inertial mass is simply 0.1 kilograms, and the acceleration will be 10 meters per second squared. So we multiply the mass by 10 meters per second squared. Now this is very easy to calculate, of course, because this will simply be 0.1 times 10, 
which is of course simply one. And for the units, we have kilogram meter per second squared, which is of course Newton. So to accelerate our box with feathers to one meter per second after one second, we need one Newton. Let's do the same for our more heavy box. In this case, we again have the force. It will be equal to the inertial mass of this box multiplied by the acceleration that we want to accelerate it with. In this case, the inertial mass is 100 kilograms and the acceleration is again the same, namely 10 meters per second squared. And the same calculation gives us that we get in this case 1000 newtons that are needed to accelerate this mass such that it has a velocity of 10 meters per second after one second. And this short calculation and comparison shows that you need a force that is 1000 times larger to accelerate an object that is 1000 times heavier. And this of course makes perfect sense. However, I want to draw your attention that the only difference between these two cases is this mass here in front of this acceleration. And in this case, it is the inertial mass because it clearly shows that this is a property of an object that indicates how hard or how easy it is to move this object or to accelerate this object. And let's now use this knowledge in this scenario where gravity plays an important role. And in this scenario, we consider our same two objects as before, the box with feathers and the box that is loaded with a heavy weight. And to remind you, the box with feathers is 0.1 kilogram and the box with the heavy weight is 100 kilograms. And in this scenario, we consider both objects falling towards the ground. And thus, both objects have the force of gravity pulling them down towards the ground. And since we know gravity pulls harder on heavier objects, so objects with a larger mass, we know that gravity will pull harder on the object that has a weight in it. However, as stated before, both objects will have an equal acceleration. So let's see how this exactly works. First, we calculate the force of gravity for both objects. We know that the force of gravity for the light object is simply the mass of this object multiplied by the gravitational constant. And in this case, this mass will be explicitly the gravitational mass because it says how much the force of gravity of the Earth is pulling on this very light object falling towards the ground. And we know for the heavy object that our gravitational force is also equal to the mass of our object multiplied by the same gravitational constant. And again, this mass is a gravitational mass, an indication of how much gravity pulls on this object. And because we know that the heavy object has a much larger mass than the light object, we know that the gravitational force will pull much harder on the blue object. And since the gravitational force pulls a lot harder on the heavy object, surely it will accelerate at a much higher rate, right? Well, acceleration has to do with Newton's second law. So let's calculate this. And because we're now going to work with Newton's second law, and Newton's second law also contains the mass of an object, the inertial mass, I'm going to subscript the masses here with a small g to indicate that these masses in the formula for gravitation are the gravitational masses. We know that Newton's second law says that the force needed to accelerate an object is equal to the inertial mass of this object multiplied by the acceleration that we want to accelerate it to. The same is true for the heavy object. The force needed to accelerate an object is equal to the inertial mass multiplied by the acceleration. Now in this case, the force to accelerate the object is of course the force of gravity in both cases. And for both of these cases, we found an expression for this force of gravity. Thus, we can simply plug this in into our equation. This one goes there and this one goes in there. Doing this, we find the following. We find that the gravitational mass times the gravitational acceleration is equal to the inertial mass times the acceleration that this object will actually have under the force of gravity. The same is true for the heavy object. The force here will be the gravitational mass times the gravitational constant, which will be equal to the inertial mass multiplied by the acceleration A, which will be the acceleration that the object will actually have. So to take a step back here, 
we wanted to compare the acceleration of these two objects here because we found that the gravitational force pulls much harder on the heavier mass and therefore we expect that this will accelerate much faster. Therefore, we use Newton's second law to actually calculate the acceleration under the force of gravity. So this will be the acceleration of our light object and this will be the acceleration of our heavy object. So will these two actually be the same or not? Well, let's see what this acceleration actually becomes. So for the light object, we see that we have the gravitational mass and the inertial mass on both sides of the equality sign. Now, of course, as initially stated, these are equal to each other, but their origins are different. But since they are equal to each other, in this case 0.1 kilogram, they can be dropped out. And we see that the acceleration of our light object will simply be the gravitational acceleration. Now the exact same procedure can be done for the heavy object. We see that we have the inertial mass describing how difficult it is to move this object and we have the gravitational mass which describes the extent to which this mass is attracted to the earth. But since we know that they are equal we can drop them and therefore we see also in this case that the acceleration of the heavy object will be also equal to the gravitational constant. So we see that both these objects will accelerate towards the ground with the same acceleration, namely roughly 10 meters per second or the gravitational constant. So if you had to put this into words, why both objects accelerate at the same rate even though they have a different mass, you would say the following. Sure, the gravitational force pulls harder on the heavier object, However, a heavier object needs more force to accelerate. And because the inertial mass and the gravitational mass are equal to each other, these two balance each other out. So it's pulled on by a larger gravitational force, but that's exactly needed because it's a heavier object and it needs more force to accelerate. I hope you found this explanation helpful because it's an oftentimes misunderstood concept. If you want to learn more, you can watch other videos of mine which might help you become a better scientist. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.